Okay, here's a review of gravitational potential energy and we'll do a couple of quick example problems pretty much like we did in class. So it's either review or maybe a missed class. And so we have a object of mass m on a planet of mass big M and it's initially a distance ri from the center and we're going to do some work on it and lift it up to a higher height and we want to calculate the work done and since gravity is a conservative force, that would be the change in potential energy of the mass planet system. But we are assuming big M is much bigger than little m here. And so if I let go of it, um, the change in kinetic energy of little m would essentially equal the change in potential of the whole system here. And so we want to find the work done to lift it. So if we do a graph of force of gravity versus R. Uh, we get a curve, and so to get the work done, we know that's the area under the curve, and so you could estimate it. You got a one trapezoid, and that would sort of work. What if I cut it into two trapezoids? Hey, that'd work a lot better. What about four trapezoids? Hey, that'd almost give me exactly the answer. Well, if we know calculus, we can calculate, uh, cut it up into an infinite number of trapezoids, and essentially now they're rectangles, and they have a width dx, which would be dr uh, for this particular problem. Let's just put dr there. And then the height would be whatever the force is. So this equation can be parsed down to be this is the width of one piece, this is the height, so I multiply the two, I get the area of one piece, and this little snaky sign means add them all up. And then we just put in the force of gravity, and we're integrating with respect to r, not x, doesn't really matter. Uh, technically, there's a minus sign here, uh, but gravity is doing negative work, and so those two cancel out. The key thing is when we get our answer, it should show that when I lift it, the potential energy of the system goes up. And so we can integrate between these limits and move the constants out, rewrite 1 over r squared as r to the minus 2. And so we know that comes out to r to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. And so if I add 1 to negative 2, I get a negative 1. And so it's negative 1 over r. You should go through that yourself and verify that. And then the limits would be from rf to ri. So I put in RF and I get a negative number and I subtract from that putting in RI. So the end result is GMM over RI minus GMM over RF. And that is the work and the change in, technically it should be the change in potential energy. And this is often done with these sorts of problems as we let the potential energy equal zero at R equals infinity. So we always pick some point where potential energy is zero to make things convenient. All this sounds crazy. Uh, it actually makes things easier, like driving the uh, escape velocity equation. Another way to think of it is everything you ever see around you started out at r equals infinity. That was its initial position. And somehow it got to where it was, and somebody did work. And so the potential energy it has was represented by the work done by whoever brought that there, the collapse of the solar nebula, however you want to picture it. But if I do that, I just get an equation instead of for the change for uh, the actual potential energy where it's equal to zero at r equals infinity. And so the negative sign is part of the equation. And so you can't just leave that out. Notice the potential energy increases as r increases. And so when I go from here to here, I end up with a smaller negative number. So maybe here it was negative 1,000, and then up here it's negative 500, and so I increase the potential energy, energy by 500. So it still checks out with what makes sense that if we lift something, the potential energy of the system goes up. And this potential energy is shared between the planet and the mass, but if we assume this, then only m is going to move uh, in any measurable amount. Uh, you should be able to do problems where we don't have this assumption. So if you 
have something really big here, they would both fall together. They would both move, and then you would have to have a kinetic energy term for that other one. So here's a quick example. Uh, you can just read it yourself if you want. Uh, but we're going to drop the thing maybe that we just lifted, 10 kilogram rock, 1,000 kilometers above the Earth. And so this is now just not any planet but the Earth. Uh, how fast is it going when it hits? So a couple of things to point out. We're ignoring the atmosphere. I could say how fast is it going at the top of the atmosphere, and we could still do it. But let's just simplify it. And then notice this isn't to scale. And so the Earth's radius is about 6,000 kilometers. So it's really maybe more like that. So we're not dropping it really far, but this is far enough so that if you use MGH, um, little g changes enough so your answer is going to be off, and we'll see that. And so the acceleration is not constant, so using uh, kinematics with constant acceleration wouldn't work. At least it will only give you an approximate answer. And the initial, so we're going to use energy. The initial equals the final. The initial is gravitational potential. The final is kinetic and gravitational potential. So another aspect of using uh, U is negative GMM over R and saying that it's zero at R equals infinity is you're always going to have potential energy. Uh, normally we'd say on the surface it equals zero. Well, we're not. We're going to say it's zero at infinity. And so you always have this term. Well, what if you make a mistake and it really is zero? Well, that's when R is infinity. And so when you put R equals infinity, it goes to zero anyway. So watch that. Look. Make sure you have a UG term in when you're doing things this way. So the initial is negative GMM over RI, and the final is negative GMM over R final plus the kinetic of only the little mass. So we're ignoring motion of big M, and that's good for a 10 kilogram rock in the Earth, but if they're of similar mass, then no. And so we know what G is, we know what the mass of the Earth is, the initial radius would be the radius of the Earth plus the altitude, that's a thousand kilometers in meters, and then the final was the radius of the Earth, and you do some algebra. Don't memorize this equation, it's this process. All I have to do is throw the rock down, and this equation doesn't work. And so make sure you can drive it, and maybe try this out yourself. It's not trivial to have everything correct, and still not get the right answer. And if you did use MGH, you get 4427, that's not too far off. But again, if we really lifted it up more than Earth radius, it'd be way off. And so you'd need to use GM, negative GMM over R. So let's do another example. Um, oh, there it went. Um, in this case, we're going to launch it up, and we want to know what is the maximum altitude the rock can reach. If we launch it at 3,000, and so it's not going to get as high as 1,000 kilometers because the previous one was going over 4,000 meters per second when it hit. And so if I launch it up at that speed, it'd reach 1,000 uh, kilometer altitude. So this shouldn't go as high. And so again, acceleration isn't constant. You could integrate it, but it's going to involve some uh, calculus to get the uh, using acceleration because the acceleration changes. Energy is easier. Initial equals the final, uh, the initial potential energy plus the kinetic as we launched it equals the potential energy at the end because we want the hot maximum altitude, so the final velocity is zero. And again, make sure you have the minus sign in there. And only kinetic energy of the uh, particle. Uh, the Earth is not recoiling in the other direction when we launch the rock up. And then again, watch that minus sign. And if you do some algebra to solve for RF, you might get something like this. Uh, whatever you do, it should come out to this. That's not the correct answer, though, because we want the altitude. So the altitude is the final radius minus the radius of the Earth. So I subtract the radius of the Earth, and I get this, which is about 490 kilometers. So it didn't even reach half of what it did when we launched it, um, or when um, if we would have launched it at the speed we derived in the other uh, example. So give this a try, maybe do some other things. What if you launched it at 2,000? It won't go as high, you should be able to verify that. 